All right, uh, so we've got a bit of technical setup because I'm going to be doing a demo. Um, but I know that it's pretty late on in the conference, and a lot of you guys have sat through a lot of talks, and people online have watched them uh, from their homes. It looks like we're still missing this USB C hub. Uh, so I'll just talk a little bit about what I'm going to demo today. Uh, and that's something which a lot of you guys in this room have probably done before. It's submitting a transaction on the Talisman wallet. Uh, and the goal is that if all things go well and the conference internet plays along, this is a really unremarkable event uh, because it works without you realizing that something extraordinary is going on. And that extraordinary thing is that we're using a light client. Uh, we are a peer on the own network. And uh, we're going to do it live in this room on that laptop. Uh, so let's, let's see how it goes. And I'll explain why this is a really, really important uh, artifact and milestone for the ecosystem. So uh, in front of me, I have a, uh, a, a special install of the Talisman wallet. Uh, it's running a light client, which is synced right now to the Polkadot relay chain. And uh, I'm going to kind of do this demo in a little bit of a backwards way to work around the conference internet. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but it's a very, very simple transaction. We're going to send a couple of dots uh, from the demo account to the destination account. And this is going to be propagated to the network by a light client. It's the uh, experience that you all know and love. And now that transaction is in the block. Uh, this is really novel. Uh, the light client can not only tell when the transaction is finalized, but when it's in the block immediately. Uh, it was a real shame uh, when Pierre from Parity demoed light clients earlier uh, yesterday morning. And the extension didn't download, because we didn't really get to see how fast these things sync up. Uh, so I'm going to do this a little bit backwards and just close Chrome. Uh, make sure that this is definitely not running a light client right now. And let's see how fast this takes to spin up. So we're going to open my browser and pay attention to the loading spinners that you see uh, kind of to the left of the balance. Uh, Kusama and West End are running on normal RPC nodes. This is the modification I've done to make sure that the comparison is made. But the relay chain on Polkadot uh, is uh, syncing via a light client. So let's hope that the questionable uh, conference internet plays along and we have something nice. So we can see here that the RPCs and the light client are both loading. And if, oh, the light client has, has speed in the RPCs. That is awesome. Uh, so those are going to continue going. But I want to talk about why this is really, really important for the ecosystem. Uh, in this hall, in front of you all, I was <laughs> all right. I'm using this. I was a peer on the Polkadot relay chain, a peer on a peer-to-peer -peer network, and I did it with the questionable conference internet. And this is really powerful for a few reasons. And Pierre from Parity explained some of these yesterday. But you mitigate a lot of the risks presented uh, by having an RPC as your access point to the blockchain. You know things like reliability, where servers, servers go down, hijacking, censorship, front running. These are all mitigated by running light clients in the browser, like we've seen today. And one kind of lazy analogy I like to use is that it's a little bit like rocking up to the mainframe kind of infrastructure of a, tra of a traditional banking uh, firm and giving the transaction that you want to submit directly to the mainframe. You know, you are communicating with the engine that settles the transaction, and nobody is in your way. Uh, and that uh, is, is amazing. It mitigates all of these different risks. One thing which uh, I want to kind of clear up is that even though Substrate Connect was kind of uh, conceptualized and it started development in the last two years, and it was completed recently, this idea of kind of uh, going straight to the transaction engine is not a new idea. Uh, if those of you haven't, uh, if some of you haven't seen this, this is Gavin Wood's "Daps What Web3 Looks Like" blog post from April of 2014. And in here, he kind of uh, conceptualizes and outlines a vision for re-engineering the internet around these principles of data availability and censorship resistance and trustlessness. And in here, he uh, kind of outlines four components, the last of which is an integrated browser. And on that topic, he mentioned this, for gathering and submitting dynamic potentially private content that is necessarily volatile and subject to blah, 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 blah the peer-to-peer -peer messaging engine is used. 
And what I want to make really, really clear is that the browser embedded light client we just saw working before is the enabling technology of this messaging engine. So we've taken a large step uh, towards realizing the vision of Web3 that was actually outlined back in 2014, eight years ago. And that step has kind of taken place in the last few months. Yeah. So I want to be candid a little bit about where we are now. Uh, I kind of see three large steps for this technology to be ubiquitous, which is the aim. Uh, firstly, there needs to be an indistinguishable user experience. You know, users are going to rationally choose the thing which is quickest and most kind of reliable. And uh, we've seen today that it is quickest, amazingly, and it is reliable. Uh, and the user experience that you can have is kind of indistinguishable from the alternative. And this is definitely the hardest of the three points. But we also need to see coverage for all networks. And that's why at Talisman, we're going to be communicating with all the parachain teams and all the networks in the ecosystem uh, to ensure that for every network, there's coverage with light clients, and you can access that directly. And the third point is coverage for all the different types of transactions that you're going to submit. And this is where I'm going to kind of make the same call out that Pierre made yesterday to all of the DAP developers and front-end developers in the, in the ecosystem. Integrate the Substrate Connect SDK into your DAP. And even better, if you're a user, if you install Talisman, that's going to be synced already, and it's going to be even quicker. Uh, so you don't need to wait for that each time you do a transaction. And this way, there will be ubiquitous support for light clients. And if we can do this over the next six, six months or so, we can make a really, really grand statement, which is Talisman will be Web3's first truly unstoppable wallet. And this is something which is owned by you guys, uh, the Polkadot ecosystem, or the Paraverse, as we like to call it. Uh, this, is, this is something that we should all be collectively really, really, really proud of. Uh, so give everyone a big pat on the back, and uh, we can be proud of being in the Polkadot ecosystem. And I want to give some props. Uh, the Substrate Connect team at Parity are amazing. Uh, one kind of remarkable statistic is that it took the Talisman engineering team about 30 minutes to go from uh, a build of the extension which just used RPCs to a build which was submitting transactions via an active light client. And that's a testament to the long-term thinking of both of these teams, so big props. And the second upshot of Talisman integrating the Substrate Connect SDK into the extension is that kind of you might, you might uh, potentially have, have to have three bits of software installed on your browser. Uh, Polkadot.js for those substrate accounts and those transactions. Those are in Talisman. They always have been. Substrate Connect for running these light clients and making sure that you have the fastest transaction times possible. That's integrated and will be live for both relay chains and both test nets within the month. And a big uh, kind of change and addition we've made to the Talisman wallet, which was launched last week, is the addition of EVM kind of ECDSA assigners and the ability to interact with an app which was actually built to interact with MetaMask. So for those uh, applications that exist on chains like Moonbeam, Moonriver, ASTAR, ASTAR's implementation of the EVM, and the car's EVM Plus, you can just use Talisman. Uh, so the number of bits of software that a Paraverse user needs on their browser is one, and that's the Talisman wallet. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> And you can download the wallet. You can download the wallet at talisman.xyz.